Good morning, class. We're going to be looking today um, at um, all of Chapter 1, Ethics in the Examined Life. Uh, what I want you to do is um, take a minute to look at what ethics really is. Ethics basically is the ph philosophical study of morality. Um, we also call ethics moral philosophy. Now, what is morality? I mean, bas basically what uh, morality seems to us is, is what we think is right, what we think is wrong, um, and our beliefs about that. So um, in morality, um, and those beliefs that we think about right and wrong, those can include um, judgments that we have uh, from uh, our judgments that we have in the past, judgments of people, judgments of things that we think is right, judgments from things that we think is wrong. It also can include our values, how we were raised, how we were um, uh, taught by our parents to, to value some things and, and value um, and not value others. Another one is um, the rules of society um, can dictate our values and can dictate our judgments and can dictate those beliefs as well. And our principles that we hold inside, um, inside our hearts, inside our heads about what we think is right and wrong. Um, also, values, uh, beliefs can include those things um, such as theories, and we're going to learn a lot of theories uh, about what is right and what is wrong in ethics and morality uh, during this course. So uh, the chapter, the, the name of your book is called Doing Ethics. So what does that actually mean? Um, doing ethics, doing is a verb, and it actually is um, talking about deliberating or, or um, discussing uh, about the rightness and wrongness of actions. Uh, and, and what we're going to do is we're going to look all through this course, we're going to look at the soundness of our moral outlook. Is, is it um, built on uh, stable uh, uh, thoughts, stable values, and can we um, actually take our values and can we um, back them up and, and, and um, solidify what we what we believe. <clears throat> Another thing about doing ethics is that um, it involves questioning whether our moral decision making rests on um, coherent supporting considerations. Now, um, when we're doing um, ethics, what we want to look is we want to look at um, first person questions like what should I do in this situation? But doing ethics also asks those third person questions like, is Missy's actions vicious? Is Mark's argument sound? Now, first person answers help us with those third person questions and vice versa. Now, in ethics, there are different domains of ethics. Now, ethics is a part of philosophy, and it's divided into three distinct categories. And, and the, the first one is normative ethics, the second one is meta-ethics, and the third one is applied ethics. Now, normative ethics are those things that are normal to us. Meta-ethics you've probably never heard of, um, but we're going to get into that in just, a, in just a little bit. But applied ethics is how do we apply those ethics in our everyday life? Now, normative ethics, let's look at that. That's looking at the rules or the theories that guide our actions. And basically, it's to look, it's to establish the soundness and the morals, um, the soundness of those moral norms. What is normal to us might not be normal to others. And so we want to look at, at, at is our normal, is it sound? Is it built on uh, principles that, that make our decision making correct? Now, normative ethics looks at things like, is happiness the greatest good in life, or should the rightness of the actions be judged by their consequences? Now, meta-ethics, that's where we, uh, we dive a little bit deeper into the study and the meaning of logical um, moral beliefs. Uh, and and when, we, when we do that, we question all the assumptions that inform us of the normative ethics. It, we question everything about, you know, what it, the, is this normal? What makes this normal? And um, is it normal in our lives? We look at questions like, on what grounds can um, a moral principle be justified? And is there such a thing as moral truth? Um, in applied ethics, what we're doing is we're looking at um, uh, the application of those norms to specific moral issues or cases, and we'll be doing all that throughout this semester, is looking at specific cases. 
Um, now, the purpose of applied ethics is to learn something about specific uh, situations um, and about the adequacy of how those moral norms address those specific situations. It looks at questions like, is physician-assisted suicide um, morally permissible or is eating animal flesh you know, morally wrong? Um, and it um, basically leads into the um, elements of ethics. Now, the elements of ethics are the preeminence of reason, uh, looking at it from a universal perspective, looking at it from an impartial view, and um, looking at how these moral norms dominate our lives. Now, the preeminence of reason, reasoning um, in doing ethics requires critical reasoning. And that's what I'm going to ask you all during this semester, is I'm going to ask you to look at those uh, reasons. And, 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 and what I want you to do is to critically think, go beyond what uh, normal, uh, normally you, you think about, and try to think about things from other perspectives and other points of view. Now, the universal perspective is uh, that we follow that principle of universalizability, that a moral statement has to apply in one situation, then it has to apply in all other situations that are relatively similar. So we've got to look at, is our moral norms, can it be universalized, can it be applied in every situation in similar circumstances? Now, impartiality, uh, when doing ethics, looks at each individual and um, looks at, you know, everybody should be treated the same. Um, and the dominance of moral norms, when principles or values conflict in some way with non-moral non norms or values, we have to um, have those moral considerations that we think about and we critically reason, to, we have to override um, uh, some of the others. Now, let's, let's talk about religion and morality. Now, whatever your views on religion are and morality, um, in this class, what I want you to do is have an open-minded approach to doing ethics, and it's more useful and empowering than you realize. Now, believers do need moral reasoning. Our most religious commandments and ethics on ethical issues are at best general and need interpretation and application. But by doing ethics, we can think uh, we can think critically about situation. Uh, can um, religious believers interpret religious directives and try to apply those general rules to specific cases? Um, also in morality, when conflicts arise um, in uh, religion and morality, when conflicts arise in those two things, um, that's when ethics steps in. Ethics is a, uh, a non-judgmental part of looking at religion and looking at morality and trying to, to make sense of our morality. Um, all denominations, Christians, Jews, Muslims, atheists, Buddhists, um, we disagree with each other and, but we, and we have moral questions. But reasonable discussion of those moral conflicts, they need that neutral standard and moral philosophy is that neutral standard. Um, it helps us to, to look at religion, helps us look at morality and apply those in certain situations. Now, ethics provides productive discourse, and all through this class, we're going to have all kinds of discussions and discourse. Or you're going to agree, you're going to disagree, but only with a common set of agreed upon procedures for making judgments can we, from different religious traditions or from no religious tradition at all, talk fruitfully about moral issues. Now, ethics provides these procedures. Um, let's, look at, let, let's look at these illustrations just for a minute. Let's say that Jack believes murder is wrong because he's a Christian, and he accepts the Bible's teaching that you should not murder. But Jill, she believes murder is wrong because that's self-evident to reason without any kind of religious uh, backing at all. Now, both Jack and Jill agree that murder is wrong. So the religious basis of Jack's belief and the non-religious basis of Jill's belief, those don't matter to this question because they both agree that murder is wrong. Now, ethics provides those productive discourse. Now, when we're doing ethics, um, first of all, moral positions should be explained. Second, it should be supported by reasons, and reasonings should be judged by common standards. And that's what I want you to get out of this course uh, for this semester. Um, so this is just basically an introduction to, to morality, introduction to ethics, and what it, what it applies. And we're going to dive deeper into this um, all through the semester. So just hang on. The first half of the semester, 
is going to be all the theories and um, how, do, how we judge theories and how we look at things from those theories point of view. The second part of the semester is going to be is going to involve um, certain issues like abortion, uh, civil rights, racism, uh, uh, human sexuality rights, um, animal rights, and, and um, physician-assisted suicide. All of those issues that we'll be, we will be doing in the latter part of the sem semester. So I look forward to working with you all during the semester. And um, if you have any questions, please don't. Uh, please just feel free to to contact me um, through Blackboard messaging or through email or call me on the phone. I'll be glad to help you in whatever way I can. Thank you.